So there's no doubt, if you've spent any time streaming at all, you've thought about picking up an Elgato Stream Deck. The Stream Decks, they're very nice, but they're quite a bit pricey. What if there was a way that I told you you can take the gear that you already have, spend no money at all, and get the same functionality as an Elgato Stream Deck? What's going on guys? I'm Ryan Burris with Riot Tech Gaming, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the gear you already have, spend no money, and essentially get an Elgato Stream Deck. All right, guys, so right before we get started, I did want to give you a heads up. I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Link's in the description down below. So if you want to see how all this works or you have any more questions, go ahead and check me out on there. And this video is going to be broken up into three different methods. And the first method, method number one, that's going to show you how to turn your keyboard into your stream deck. Let's go ahead and just jump right into that. All right, guys, so for method one, we are going to load into our streaming software of choice. I'm using Streamlabs OBS for mine. This will work with XSplit, regular OBS, and Stream Elements, depending on which one you're using. Now, again, like I said, I'm using Streamlabs OBS, and mine is already set up. This is all the stuff that I use currently for my streams. Having a bunch of different scenes, and then a bunch of different sources that I have set up for all the stuff I got going on on stream. If you do need help setting all this up in Streamlabs, I do have a tutorial video on how to get you guys started with Streamlabs OBS. Link in the card right above. Go ahead and click on that if you have any trouble. But from here, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do, usually with most people with their Stream Deck, they have it switching scenes. So I have three scenes here and we're gonna go ahead and set that up. So this first method, we're gonna use the keyboard and specifically I'm gonna use my numpad as my Stream Deck. So I'm gonna have the numpad buttons, certain buttons mapped out to do certain things. So we'll go over here down into settings, click that and go into hotkeys. The hotkeys is the section that we're gonna to wanna to be in for to do really all this stuff. There's a lot you can do with it and you just gotta get a little creative at times. So if we wanna to switch to intermission screen, which is my second scene, we'll scroll all the way down and look for something that says switch to scene. Now as it stands, I already have it set up to numpad two, but for the video, I'll delete it. All you have to do is click once, and then I'm gonna click numpad two on my keyboard, and then I'll set that up to where, if I press numpad two on the keyboard, it will switch to the intermission scene. Now let's do the same thing for main. This is currently the main screen that I got going on. Again, they're usually always at the bottom in Streamlabs, so I'll scroll all the way down. Let's switch to scene. Again, it's set to numpad one, I'll delete it click it once, and then press numpad one on my keyboard. So now as it sits right here, we should have numpad one and numpad two switch two different scenes. So since we're already in main, I'm gonna hit numpad two, and then it switches over into my intermission, intermission screen. So this one here, which is my regular intermission screen, and then press one again, and it'll switch back to my main screen, which shows my webcam and then the game capture as well. So another thing people like to do with a stream deck is the ability to start and stop their streams with just a button press. And we can do this the exact same way we did the scene transitions by just mapping out a button on your keyboard and setting it up to start or stop your stream. Now the same thing, we'll go down into the settings, we'll click hotkeys, and in this top section here of Streamlabs OBS, they have a bunch of different main functions you can do, start or stop the stream, stop recording, start recording, enable studio, disable studio, transitions, save replays, toggle in-game overlay, and toggle overlay positioning mode. For this one, again, we're gonna want start streaming. For this, I will do page up as my button, and for stop streaming, I will do page down. And then we just gotta click done, and again, you can map it out to whatever buttons you want to start or stop your stream, and then you just press those buttons. For this one though, I'm not gonna press the page up or page down to start the stream, because it will just automatically start the stream right away. It doesn't give you the chance to change your title or anything. It's gonna use your same settings. And for this video, I don't really wanna go live right now since I'm recording this for you guys. But just trust me that that does work. You can go ahead and try it on your own. All right, guys. So I know starting and stopping your stream and even scene transitions aren't the most interesting thing to have on your stream deck. However, you can use this method and get as creative as you want with it. So let's say you wanted to add in some animations with or without sound, maybe a GIF or even just like a meme that pops up at the press of a button. I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do that too. Now, the next thing people like to do with the Stream Deck is say you want to play an animation or a GIF or even like a meme or something. And in order to do that, we will go ahead and click the plus button on sources 
add a new media source. Click add source, start with a new one. We'll just type in animation. Click add source. Again, you're gonna to wanna to find the file. You can either download it from the internet, which is what I did with this one I'm gonna show you. You can record your own if you wanted to make like a video of yourself doing something and you wanted to animate that and put it on your stream, which is a good idea. But for this, I just have a few that I downloaded. I'll open that. <coughs> the one I downloaded is just a little Charmander. And if you, for setup purposes, it always helps to click the loop button so it just continuously plays. And for this, we can kind of just put it wherever we want. For this, I kind of want him to just do it like he's doing his little dance on the desk and I can like come and pet him. Boop, boop, boop. So for this, okay, so that's set up. Now again, once it's in your sources, you can go down into the settings, click hotkeys. It's gonna be in my main scene. So I'll scroll down to main and then we have to find it. Remember we called it animation. So it's actually gonna be these right here, show and hide animation. So right now, since it's looping, it's gonna just loop it forever. If I want this one, I will map this one to five on my numpad. So if I hit five, it'll play the Charmander running in circles. Hide animation, numpad zero. For me, I have a few different animations set up, but I have all of the hide buttons to the same button and you can map multiple things to the same button if you want. So all my hide animations are set to the zero key. That way I can just clear them just in case anything goes wrong. So yeah, number head five and number head zero. So we'll click done, we'll hit zero, and it deletes Charmander from running in circles. And we'll press five on the numpad, and it brings him right back, and then he's here. And then I can kind of give him some pets while he's running around in circles. And press zero again, and it gets rid of him. Okay, so let's say you want to do something a little more complicated. Let's say you want to trigger two things at the same time. So for example, if you wanted to add in an animation as well as play a sound for the animation. And we can do that the exact same way we've been doing these other things. But first we have to add in both the sound and the animation. So we'll go over into sources, hit the plus button, add a media source, add source, click new. I'm gonna name it animation. This will be for the actual video file. I'm gonna click loop, so that way it keeps playing the video file until we can place it in the right spot. And I think for this one, we're gonna just go ahead and put it in the corner here, make it a little bit bigger. So go back into sources, hit the plus button again, media source, add source, new again. This one I'm gonna name animation underscore sound. Add source, home browse, and I want this video file. Now these video files I kind of edited to make sure they fit together a little bit better. Click done, go back in the animation, don't need to loop anymore. So now we have the animation sound and the animation, and it's not looping. So we'll go back into settings, go over into hotkeys again, scroll down into main, since it is in the main theme. We need show and hide animation sound and show and hide the regular animation. So for this I'll click it and I'll press numpad 4. For me, I want it to trigger when I press numpad 4. Again, for you, you're gonna choose whichever button you have free. Go back to the sound as well and hit numpad 4. Now for the hides, like I've been adding on everything, numpad 0 is my kind of delete button to reset everything. And then the shows are gonna be on the same button push. So click done, hit 0 just to reset everything and then press 4. And it'll play the animation and the sound. And there you go. And that's how you trigger multiple things at once with one button push. And you can kind of make this more complicated. Say you wanted to run three or four things all at once. You just attach them all to the same exact button. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up method number one, where we take your keyboard and turn that into your stream deck with any free keys that you're currently not using. Now you can go a lot further than just the examples that I showed you. Just use your creativity and this method can go pretty far. And that brings us on to method number two. Method number two is gonna build upon method number one where we're still mapping buttons to certain functions. But this is gonna be more for people who want a standalone option or for people who have a smaller keyboard and don't have that many free keys. So what we're gonna do with method number two is we're gonna pick up a USB numpad and I'll link a few in the description down below that are pretty nice. And then with the USB numpad, we'll map the certain buttons on that to the certain functions that you want for your stream deck. So the numpad becomes your stream deck with the same thing that we did in method one. 
Now with this, there's a lot more customizable options you can do with this. You can kind of place it wherever you want, on your desk or even off your desk if that's what you want. You can put stickers or you can even do custom keycaps to indicate what certain buttons do the certain functions that you want. Now again, this isn't as nice as an actual Elgato with LCD screens, but it does work and it is a cheaper option. It's still gonna run anywhere from about 10 to $30 depending on the numpad that you pick up. Method number three is gonna be the most legit method out of all the methods because you're using Elgato's actual app to turn your cell phone into the Stream Deck. Now this app is currently only available for the Apple Store and it is gonna run you about $3 a month to use, but it does give you the full function of an actual Stream Deck just on your cell phone. It's the most legit method, but it could be better just to pick up an Elgato Stream Deck if this is the way you want it to go. And that's gonna cover all three methods. But guys, let me know in the comment section down below which out of these methods you're more likely to use. For me, I think I'm gonna stick with method number one for quite a while before I end up picking up an Elgato Stream Deck. Unless you guys would like to see an Elgato Stream Deck review, also let me know in the comment section down below. Now, if you guys did find this video helpful at all, hit a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. And also we got more relevant content this way. You can click here, save a puppy's life. You know, just click one of these videos, save all the puppies. I know you wanna save puppies, so just, just click them. Go ahead, do it. Do it, do it. You can still click.